So just over a year ago, Home Assistant removed MyQ's integration from their platform following a statement from Chamberlain LiftMasters CTO saying that they were gonna close off all the APIs and basically they didn't want you to have control of your own garage door opener in your own house. They wanted you to use their MyQ service, which you can't fully use without a subscription service. And that was just gonna be the way that they wanted it to go. So a lot of people have worked very tirelessly to find ways around this and to figure out ways to take control back of their garage door openers. And one of those options is the RAT GDO or the Rage Against the Garage Door Opener. So I have the RAT GDO 2.53i model, which is technically now out of date as of this video coming out because Paul, the creator of RAT GDO, has come up with a newer version of it, the RAT GDO 32 and the 32 Disco. These add a bunch of new features in them, um, but mine is still gonna work out exactly fine. If I knew that they were coming out with a new version, I probably would have held off because I'm not installing it until now anyways. But this will do more than what I needed to for now and maybe in the future, I'll switch it out for one of the newer versions. We'll see. Um, with that in mind, let's go ahead and check out what the newer versions have compared to the version that I have. So as mentioned, I have the RAT GDO 2.53i. It's just one of the many revisions for the 2.5 platform. Um, it uses the ESP8266 board and I'm able to use it with almost any garage door opener out there, but specifically I have a Chamberlain Security Plus, so I am able to use that, which is great. Now comparing it with the newer RAT GDO 32, it comes with a newer ESP32 processor. Um, it has the same amount of compatibility between the two, but the case, the 3D printed case is now included. I did not actually purchase the 3D printed case. I'm just gonna 3D print my own once I get my 3D printer set up. It supports a wider range of obstruction sensors. So you're able to get five to 20 volts instead of just six volts, which is nice. It uses the five volt VDC uh, input. It switches over to USB-C instead of micro A, which is really nice. And the native HomeKit stuff is currently just in beta, whereas on my version, HomeKit is already fully flushed out. Now the 32 Disco improves on the 32 even more so, where it adds vehicle detection and a lot of vehicle related features. So it has a vehicle detection laser, vehicle arriving, vehicle leaving, vehicle distance. It also has a beeper with delay to close, which is kind of cool. And you can add an additional parking assistance laser to help you line up your car in your garage to make sure that it's exactly where you want it to be. So you can't even buy the older uh, Rat GDO 2.5 versions anymore. They're completely out of stock. He sells through them extremely quickly. And I'm assuming as soon as he released the Rat GDO 32, he just wasn't restocking the 2.5s. And once they were out, they're out. So now your only options are the newer 32 or the 32 Disco. Now, if we wanna talk about the price differences, the RAT32 does go up in price a little bit from the original 2.5 version. Uh, the 2.5 version that I bought was $54 US. As I mentioned, it is now currently sold out. And the RAT32 is a $62 version, but it also comes with the 3D printed case, which normally was $9 anyways. So, Technically, you're getting it around the same price uh, if you include the case, so that's not too bad whatsoever. And if you wanna get the disco version that has the uh, vehicle assistance features, then it is $94 US. So the first thing we have to do is flash the firmware on here, depending on what we're gonna be using. So I'm not using HomeKit, I'm using Home Assistant, so we're gonna be flashing the ESP firmware on here. So let's go ahead and get that going. All right, so I figure I may as well first go over what actually came with my RAT GDO. So we have the actual RAT GDO board itself, uh, which is pretty nice. Again, I have the 2.53i version, so we got that. We got our micro USB cable uh, for power. We have a little power brick that just kind of looks like one of the very generic Apple style power bricks. We have the black cable set. Um, if we want to use that, uh, it is an optional one, I believe. Once we go to the wiring kit uh, diagrams, we'll take a look. And then we have the black, white, and red that are used for the garage door opener. So we have those. These cables are actually pretty nice. They're nice and thin, and they are tinned ends, so they're not splitting everywhere, which is kind of nice. Um, so it should make 
installing much easier. All right, so now we have to go ahead and install the firmware that we want to end up using. And because I have the older version, I have to actually scroll down here and get to the 2.53i. And as mentioned here, we have to use Google Chrome or a Chromium-based browser because none of the other browsers support serial device communication right now. So we're gonna go ahead and connect the board to our computer using the micro USB. And it says don't use a hub or your monitor or anything like that. All right, so we got our little guy plugged in. We're gonna go ahead and grab this driver that's required. All right, now that that's all installed, we're gonna go ahead and do the ESP Home. If you're using HomeKit, then you would just use the HomeKit version, but we're using ESP Home. And now we just gotta go ahead and select a few things. So uh, my garage door opener uses Security 2.0. So we're going to use the Security Plus 2.0. I have the RAT GDO 2.53i, so we're using that one. And now we're going to go ahead and do the connect. So we have our USB serial here. And we're going to do install. Let's do erase device, even though it's brand new, and install. Now we're going to see a blue blinking light there, so that will continue to blink throughout the whole process. Once the installation's done, uh, it'll tell us on the screen here, and the blue flashing light will be done. All right, so our install is complete. We can go ahead and put next. We can go ahead and do our Wi-Fi. So someone's oven around me has a Wi-Fi. Uh, that's interesting. We're gonna go ahead and grab my Palantir. That's the one that I have all of my uh, IoT devices on. I'm gonna go ahead and type my password. We have our device connected to the network. Now we can really quickly visit the device. So it'll go ahead and open up a new tab. It'll give us our state. Um, we can go ahead and just take a look at all that information. It's not plugged into anything, so we're just gonna leave it as is right now. But I'm also just gonna go ahead and integrate it into my Home Assistant to make it a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do ESP Home. We're gonna do our RAT GDO. We're gonna go ahead and add that to Home Assistant. We're gonna do our area, garage, and finish. So now we should be able to see it here. If we go ahead and hit our device, we can see a whole bunch of information. And we'll go back into this once we get it wired up, hooked up to the garage door, and we actually get to use the features that it has here for us. So here we have our wiring diagram for setting up the RAT GDO, and we're gonna do it in the pass-through method, which is the recommended method by Paul. Um, it's very easy to do, especially on the version that I have, because everything is just super simple. We don't have to do the dry contact controls, which is nice. We don't have to use this uh, black cable at all. We can just leave this one out. And this one actually slots directly into the board, which makes life super easy. These three connections go into the garage door opener, and then the ones that are currently in the garage door opener go into those slots there. So it's a pretty easy setup to do, and uh, it shouldn't take me very long. So let's go into the garage and get that thing going. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and unplug our garage door opener and then we're going to come down here so i don't know if i mentioned it but there's two technical ways that you can go ahead and wire this thing you can either do it as a piggyback where you just go ahead and add these wires into these connections and it just piggybacks onto the garage door opener or you can set up the pass through where you move these cables into the rat gdo um and you get it working that way, and then these still go into here. So we're gonna do the pass-through method. Um, it's relatively simple. The nice thing is, is that they also include the diagram on the back of the actual device. So we can see where all of this stuff goes. And we're just gonna move the cables directly from here into here relatively easily. Um, the nice thing is, is it's actually kind of set up this way. So it's a pretty easy go over. Um, and then we'll go ahead and move these into the garage door opener and then we should be good to go. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and move the cables over from the garage door opener into my RAT GDO. And um, I would suggest you take a picture of this just in case you ever need to switch it back or anything like that. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and move them over 
and we're gonna do them one by one just so that we don't forget. And on the garage door opener, it's relatively easy. You just push the orange in and you pull it out like so. And then on the Rat GDO, you go ahead and push in the orange and slide that in there. And then you let go and it should be pretty well held on there. Make sure it's nice and tight. So we're good on that first one. And we'll do the next one. And my garage door opener technically has power right now because it has a battery, but it's not a problem, I don't think. So we're just gonna make our way down. The guy who installed did a pretty good job with these cables. I like what he did here. Hopefully the camera is able to see what I'm doing. I can't see what the camera sees right now. All right. So you got all these in. Let's make sure they're all tight. Give them a little tug if you want to try to get them seated a little more, but as long as you give everything a tug and uh, it's, in there properly, you should be good. So we're gonna go ahead and just move that up there like this. And we're gonna go ahead and get these plugged in. So let me see if I remember. So red goes into red. Black goes into black. And if I remember correctly, the white goes into the leftmost white. And we would be correct. So we go for black, red, and white. So we should be good to go. Now let's go ahead and get the Rat GDO plugged into power as well as the garage door. All right, so I just ended up moving the wires out. So I pulled the wires that were inside outwards just to, so I can move this over here and wire the Rat GDO stuff through. So right now we're just gonna leave the Rat GDO like this. Um, once I 3D print the case, I'll go ahead and mount it up here. Um, but for now, it's gonna work fine. Go ahead, get that closed up, and let's go ahead and uh, check our Home Assistant. All right, so we're in Home Assistant. Everything is working. Um, we can toggle our light on and off through the app, which you couldn't do with MyQ, so that's pretty sweet. Um, we can actually probably tie that to the motion sensors. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, so we can lock all the remotes so that none of the remotes will work, so that's cool. We could toggle the garage door to just on off just as if we were pressing the button on the, the wall we can toggle it up or down and stop it so that's pretty cool as well um, i wasn't able to get the percentage opening to work but maybe it's working now it's saying it's opening to 50 percent so it's working now so that's cool it wasn't working about 10 minutes ago uh, but it's working so that's cool um, we can go ahead and close it a little bit more so that's a pretty sweet feature and you can toggle it between this whole percentage open close versus the uh, stop go open close. So that's kind of awesome as well. Our sensors are here. Now people are mentioning that the motion sensor doesn't really work and I haven't gotten it to work either. Like I haven't gotten anything to say whether or not it just always stays as clear. So don't know what's going on with there. But the obstruction one is pretty cool because we have our obstruction sensor right there. So if I go ahead and put my foot in front it says problem, I put my foot away, it's okay, and it's really fast. So we could probably end up um, making some kind of automation where when the obstruction gets switched to problem, it'll trigger the light to be on for a certain period of time, and then it'll turn off over time, which Chamberlain doesn't have on any of the newer garage door openers because they lost the patent to that because another garage door opener company was like, screw you, Chamberlain, we're going to go ahead and like we've been doing this longer than you or something along those lines. Basically made it so that Chamberlain wasn't allowed to have that feature on any of their garage doors anymore, which is why a lot of their openers have the motion sensor on the actual wall remote. Um, and yeah, so everything's working out pretty well. Uh, all of our sensors and stuff are working, so that's cool. And we can also still use MyQ if we want. So 
So if I open up my queue, I can still go ahead and open and close the garage door from here, but you can't stop it when it's opening, so you're kind of stuck. Um, the last time I opened the app, when I was recording this a little bit earlier, um, it threw an ad at me to subscribe for video storage, so that's that's great. Um, but yeah, the app's pretty un pretty slow and unresponsive as well. Um, I'd only really end up using it for the camera at this point, and even then I barely use it. Um, we can go ahead and just reclose it. It yells when it tries to close through the app. Don't know why it does that either. And also our remote still works if you want to use that. So if I go ahead and do that, it opens, and then we go ahead and press it again, and it stops. So everything's working as intended. I'll probably clean up these wires at some point. Um, once I 3D print the case for it and mount it up on the on little stand there, I'll, I'll clean up the wires a little bit and zip tie them so they're, they're not kind of all over the place. But yeah, overall pretty easy. Took less than a couple of minutes. Um, I took a big pause because I was charging my GoPro so that I could do the POV, make it a little bit easier. But yeah, overall, this was super, super simple to do. And uh, yeah, straightforward. So overall, I am super impressed with the RAT GDO. It was extremely easy to get set up. Um, the wiring diagrams were a little bit difficult to understand sometimes. And I know other people had issues with it, so I hope that my video kind of helps out with that a little. If you wanted to pigtail it, instead of pulling the wires out of the garage door opener, you just insert additionally the ones from the RAT GDO into the garage door opener, and that's it. So it's super simple and relatively straightforward. I hope that my video helps anybody else that's been having troubles, specifically with my version, the 2.53i, because it is a little bit different than previous versions where just the layout's a little bit different. But overall, I am super happy with it. It was very easy to set up. It's a lot quicker to respond than the MyQ app is most of the time. MyQ is okay when I'm on Wi-Fi, but if I'm on data, trying to open my garage door takes a decent period of time. It takes like maybe 20 seconds for it to recognize that I tried to open it. And as you were able to see in the video, I can't stop it from opening from the app, so I can't open it halfway. Um, I can't, you know, open it a little bit. Oh, realize I didn't need to open the garage door and close it. I have to wait for it to open all the way up. Then when you go to close it from the app, it beeps at you because it's thinking that, you know, nobody's around. So, you know, it's trying to tell you, it's trying to make itself aware that it's closing as if people aren't going to know that my garage door is closing. So it just beeps super loud while using that. I hate that feature. Um, so I don't have to use any of that anymore. I can just do everything through my assistant. I can just ditch my queue entirely, which is fantastic. I'm super happy about that. And now I can use my garage door as I should be able to, where I'm able to do whatever I want with it. I bought it, I own it, I can control it, I can do all these fun things with it. And as I mentioned, I can set up some fun automations. Um, I can set up alerts where if it's open for a long period of time, it'll go ahead and notify me through Home Assistant, do a whole bunch of really cool stuff with that. Um, I'm going to play around with it a little bit more. So if you are interested in any of the things I do, go ahead and do with it. Let me know in the comments um, or in the Discord or what have you. Um, I'm going to just play with it over time as I do with almost everything else. But again, overall, I'm super happy with it. If you have any kind of garage door opener that has a proprietary system like Chamberlain LiftMaster's MyQ, I highly suggest doing this. It's relatively inexpensive. Again, it took me almost no time to get set up. and yeah, it has a, a lot of features and just kind of gives me back control over my own devices, which is something I always try strive for. And with all that said, I really do hope you found this video helpful. And if not, I at least hope you found it interesting. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you like, subscribed. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, whether it's on this video topic itself, something I did within the video, what have you, you can go ahead and let me know down in the comment section below and I'd be happy to get them all as quickly as I can. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors and big thanks to you for watching to the end of this video. If you wanna see any of the other videos that I've done relating to Home Assistant items, you can go ahead and check out the playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.